and uh, we have a lot of a lot of people helping, and we have, uh, most importantly, the United States Coast Guard, which has done so incredibly well in Texas and Florida and in Puerto Rico in the last hurricane, the last big one. Uh, Admiral, if you could say a few words about yeah, thank that. You, Mr. President, thank uh, you. Just to reinforce the Secretary, we're ready domestically here from Florida up through the Carolinas for Coast Guard, part of the DHS FEMA team, sir. So we, we're 100 percent ready to roll there. In the Bahamas, it's, it's been challenging. We accessed the Bahamas, the Abacos, which is in the northeastern reach right. of the Bahamas. On Monday, first flight crews of the rotary wing helicopters got in there. We've rescued probably you know, 50 folks to date. We're just starting to get a site picture on Grand Bahama Island in Freeport, which is the center of gravity population-wise in the northern Bahamas. So today we'll start to have a much fuller picture. That's the region where Dorian sat for almost 36, 48 hours and just pounded the region. Right. So we suspect the uh, impacts to be severe, sir. We're rendering, you know, life-saving support here, humanitarian assistance. We're working with U.S. AID and the Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance, who's the lead agency here, on providing, you know, urgent SAR uh, support. Our CBP Air Marine counterparts are there with helicopters and, uh, you know, we'll see where this evolves to in the next 24 hours and what type of additional support possibly from DOD may be warranted, sir. Good. Will you be using some of the supplies from Florida and even from Puerto Rico where uh, to areas that, that will definitely get hit if you look at North Carolina, South Carolina, yes, Georgia? So uh, Loftus, or the Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance under AID, has a warehouse in South Florida, so we're working on an air bridge of supplies into the Bahamas, a, a maritime bridge aboard Coast Guard cutters. What's challenging right now, sir, because we haven't got into Freeport, Grand Bahamas, and there's no open airports there. The airports are underwater. Those airports that are accessible are not accessible from roads, so most of the stuff's going to come in rotary wing. AID has got to get, you know, sort of a network in place to start distributing supplies, sir. So we're working diligently with our partners on that and trying to bring some relief to the Bahamas, sir. And I guess the other problem is we don't know how hard South Carolina, North Carolina, uh, Georgia, to an extent, could be to a big extent. We don't know yet. We don't know where the hurricane's turning, I guess. Admiral, would you like to say something about uh, that? Certainly, Mr. President. Uh, Secretary McAleen and I uh, discussed the major risks, the storm surge, the heavy rainfall, and the tropical storm, the hurricane force winds, the other aspects of this storm that make it particularly troublesome are the duration of it. It's going to be yet another two days before it would clear the North Carolina coast on its current track. There is a potential for landfall, but even without landfall, the heavy rain that's going to impact South Carolina and North Carolina is coming right on top of areas that were damaged in Hurricanes Matthew in 2016 and Hurricane Florence in 2018. So FEMA is well prepared for what they're calling response on top of recovery. These are communities, families who have already been affected by previous hurricane seasons. It's pretty amazing. This is the original path that we thought, and everybody thought that this was about a 95 percent probability, and it turned out to be not that path. It turned out to be a path going up the coast, uh, and we'll see where that happens now. There's even a chance that it could start going further right. That, ha that could happen. That would really be luck. But we certainly got lucky in Florida. Now if we can get lucky in uh, Georgia, and if you look at South Carolina and North Carolina, but it could even extend beyond that. So we're talking about Virginia. Hard to believe. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but it's a very erratic, a very slow, very powerful hurricane. It, uh, it's built up tremendous water and water supply. Uh, like few have seen, uh, Texas had something similar where the water was tremendous. The water dump was tremendous. And we have that here. But again, it looks like Florida is uh, going to be in fantastic shape by comparison to what we thought. We thought it was going to be a direct hit. We were thinking in terms of Andrew, Hurricane Andrew, from many years ago, where it went right through the middle of Miami, and uh, that was a disaster. And so uh, we're very happy about, uh, so far, Florida. And we'll see how it comes with respect to other states. But it's starting to move up along the coast. Uh, it's a little bit further away, I think, than we would have projected right now, but it can rapidly turn left uh, or west. And uh, we hope that doesn't happen. But we're very well prepared. Everybody's uh, been incredible. I have actually Peter Gaynor is on the phone listening to what we're saying. Peter, do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, yes, sir. Sorry I couldn't be there with you today. Uh, you know, more than two weeks ago, we, we started playing for this storm. Our, uh, our guidance was big storm, big response, and we are ready to go today. Um, and, and really, this is a whole of government effort. Uh, federal resources are positioned throughout uh, many states, and we're ready to respond to any uh, response uh, from multiple states or a single uh, event. 
And again, we follow the storm uh, up the coast. We'll continue to do that until uh, Dorian is not a, uh, a threat. Just to give you a uh, quick overview of some of the resources that are in the field right now, uh, 4,000 federal responders are deployed, uh, to, and that does not include the 6,000 National Guardsmen that have been mo uh, mobilized. Uh, we also have uh, national, or, excuse me, American Red Cross uh, spaces for 65,000 uh, uh, potential evacuees, and 40,000 line workers that are ready to do restoration of, uh, of uh, electrical lines. Uh, we are ready to go. And, and again, we'll follow Dorian up the coast until it is not a threat uh, to the U.S. Thank you, sir. Great job. Tell your people at FEMA, fantastic job. But we'll hold it till the very end, okay? We'll hold congratulations till the end, but we're very well prepared for North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. Uh, and again, we're helping the Bahamas at the request of the government of the Bahamas, okay? Thank you all very much. Thank you, Brad. Great to see you guys. Thank you. There was, there was some uh, concern that was voiced last week about reprogramming $115 million from the FEMA Disaster Relief Fund base budget to address the crisis on the border. Are you still comfortable with that? Is there still Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, we're using much less here than we anticipated. We thought this was going to be a direct. Originally, this was going to be a direct hit into Miami. Uh, and we're uh, we would have been satisfied anyway. You know, we need to. We need help on the border. Well, the numbers are really good. I want to thank, again, the country of Mexico. They have 25,000 soldiers right now protecting our border. And they've done a fantastic job, so we appreciate that very much. Uh, Mexico uh, has never helped us on the border, and they are now 25,000 soldiers. And you may want to talk about the numbers are down in half, I guess. Uh, yes, Kevin, sir. do you want to mention that? Yeah, we're, we're compiling the August numbers now. We'll be releasing those early next week. Uh, but we're looking at a reduction of over 50 percent uh, from May uh, to today. Uh, continued partnership with Mexico. I just got back, Mr. President, from El Salvador last week where we signed a new agreement uh, to continue to work together on irregular migration. So we're getting a lot of partnership uh, from the countries in the region uh, with your leadership uh, and, again, applying those resources at the border to enhance our security. And the wall is being built. It's going up rapidly. It's, uh, I guess, most of you have been able to see it. We're uh, building very large sections of wall. Uh, it's uh, a big factor was we just won the big Supreme Court case, as you know. And we have uh, — we're building in different sections. We're building different sections simultaneously. And we think by the end of next year, which will be sometime right after the election, actually, but we think we're going to have close to 500 miles of wall, which will be uh, complete. That'll be what we wanted to do is about 500 miles. That will take care of all of the areas that we wanted, including some of the marginal areas that we didn't necessarily need, but if we could uh, could have gotten it done, uh, we were looking to do about a 500-mile stretch. We should have it almost complete, if not complete, by the end of next year. So we Sorry, look forward Mr. to President, that. Can you with members of Congress about reprogramming Yes, we have. Can, can we ask what you told those members of Congress? Well, I didn't tell anything. Secretary of Defense uh, spoke with members of Congress and explained it to them, and I think he felt uh, very good about it. He feels it's a national security problem. I do, too. Uh, it is when you have thousands of people trying to rush our country. I think that's national security. When you have drugs pouring into our country, I view that as national security. And uh, he had very good conversations with various members of Congress. Sir, um, if this storm stays on track, going to Georgia and the Carolinas, yeah. it will hit farmers. Uh, many farmers are already having problems there. What do you have in place to help them if there is devastation? Good question. We're very well prepared for that. Uh, last time, if you remember, when it hit Mexico Beach, uh, we wiped out a large, a large uh, farm areas in not only Florida, but in Alabama and in Georgia. And what we did is we were able to help the farmers uh, a lot. Uh, as you know, we sent aid to the farmers. They lost their crops. They lost some cases, they lost almost everything. We were able to help them get them back on their feet. Uh, we'll be doing the same thing now. Uh, you will have probably some hit on farms up along the coast, and we're going to be able to go in with Secretary of Agriculture. Uh, we have a lot of money because of the tariffs we've taken in. We've taken in tremendous — many billions of dollars of tariffs from China, and we will have a lot of money to be helping our farmers along the coast if they get hit. They may not get hit. There's a real chance that this could veer out the other way, but there's also a chance that it goes straight or 
it goes left. If it goes left, that's an even different subject. But our farmers will be helped. We're going to help our farmers. Well, it depends. It depends what you're talking about. Depends who's hit, which state is hit. Right now, we don't know. We just can we can predict the path. But so far, the predicting has been very tough with this particular hurricane. Uh, but we have a lot of uh, we've taken in tens of billions of dollars in tariffs from China. Uh, prices have not gone up, or they've gone up very little. Uh, China's paid for most of that, and I say paid for all of it. Uh, China's now had the worst year that they've had in 57 years. This is the worst year they've had in 57 years. And they want to make a deal. We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, we're taking a lot of money. We haven't taken 10 cents in from China. If you look back over the years, it's been the other way around. They've taken from us. We never take from them. Now we're taking from them. So we'll see what happens. But we have a lot of money to help our farmers. Uh, last year, I gave the farmers $16 billion out of tariffs. The year before that, because they were targeted by China. The year before that, I gave our farmers $12 billion. And the way we figured that, I said, how badly have our farmers been hit by targeting from China? And I was told they were hit to the tune of $16 billion. And I made up that $16 dollar for dollar to the farmers. So the farmers are extremely happy, and they also know, and they're warriors, they also know we have to do this with China. We can't let this go on. They were taking out $500 billion a year out of this country, including intellectual property theft, which was rampant. So uh, our farmers will be helped. Uh, nobody that we've done more for than our farmers. Uh, and they understand you have to win the war with. This is a, a trade war, trade battle. You can call it anything you want. But — and this should have been done by presidents before me, and not just President Obama. This should have been done by President Bush and President Clinton. This should have been done a long time ago. China's been absolutely — the World Trade Organization's been a disaster for the United States. China has taken advantage of it and us, and that's not happening anymore. But the farmers have been taken care of — $16 billion and $12 billion each year. Okay? Thank you. Who is who? Huawei. Ah. Do you have any comment on that? No, it's a national security concern. Huawei is a big concern of our military, of our intelligence agencies, and uh, we are not doing business with Huawei. It'll stop almost completely in a very short period of time. And we'll see what happens with respect to China. But Huawei has been uh, not a player that we want to discuss, we want to talk about right now. We're not going to be doing business with Huawei. We're going to do our own business. You know the old-fashioned way? We'll do it right from within the United States, which is what I've been saying for a long time. And by the way, speaking of tariffs, there are no tariffs if you want to build or make these products in the United States. There are no tariffs whatsoever. And people are coming back now to the United States in large numbers. Senator Daines and Senator Virginia yeah. returned from a visit to China where they met with the Vice Premier. Leo, yeah. did you approve that meeting, and was it helpful? I approved it, and my people approved it. Uh, China asked for the meeting. Uh, they have a lot of respect for Senator Daines and for Senator Perdue. So do I. They're friends of mine, and they're great senators doing a fantastic job. I knew about the meeting. I approved of the meeting. And all they did is say that uh, we really have bipartisan uh, support. If you look at it, uh, and that the support is very serious, so we're not playing games. And that was the message that was given by Senator Perdue and Senator Daines. And it was given very strongly. They absolutely had my permission. And they also spoke to uh, Ambassador Lighthizer and Secretary Mnuchin about the trip before they went there. Was it helpful? Well, they told me the attitude of China. And I think, basically, they said that China would like to do something. Like, to, I know they'd like to do something. Look, they're having their worst year in, in you know, many, many decades, as I said. They're having uh, a supply chain that's being absolutely fractured and broken, which is very bad for them. They've lost three million jobs, and the jobs are moving to Vietnam and other places, including the United States, by the way. Some people are just making the product here. But they're moving all over Asia and some here. And, you know, if I were China, I'd want to make a deal. Can't tell you, but I want to make a deal. And I can tell you, they do want to make a deal. We'll see if we can do a real deal, not a fake deal like the fake media. A real deal, okay? 
What else? Well, it's uh, again, uh, I guess you would call it a British uh, protectorate, uh, but I will do a lot. We just uh, have a call. We're waiting for the call. They're having a lot of trouble with the telephones over there, as you can imagine, from the Prime Minister. And we're helping a lot. And the Admiral just said we're sending a lot of resources over there to help people on a humanitarian basis. Uh, but I, uh, I would do that if we think it's appropriate. I would stop there, yeah. We, we know the actions that, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, John, Mr. President, we had the Prime Minister on board a Coast Guard aircraft with our Atlantic Forces commander, right. the Charge Affair, the U.S. senior diplom US diplomat there, and many folks of the Bahamian government to get a site picture. Again, we couldn't access parts, but we're working very closely with the government Commonwealth of the Bahamas, sir, to help them understand the, the extent of the damage. Mr. President, they've got a situation in the Bahamas like few have seen before. It's a tough, tough thing. We know the actions that Treasury took against the IRGC and Goods Forces oil uh, deal that it was running, particularly with Syria. Um, there is some thought that this may be part of a precursor to talks between you and President Rouhani. What's your thinking on that? Well, we're going to see what happens. Uh, they want to talk. They want to make a deal. Uh, Iran is not the same country it was two and a half years ago, that I can tell you. Getting to be three years, hard to believe. Here We've been here almost three years now. I've been saying two and a half years, and it's almost three years. We're getting very close. But Iran is not the same country. When I came into office, uh, Iran was absolutely uh, a terrorist organization all over, from 14 to 18 sites of confliction, and they were behind every one of them. And now uh, you're not hearing so much about that. We'll see what happens. Uh, look, Iran is a country with tremendous potential. We're not looking for regime change. They have tremendous potential, and I think they're going to want to take advantage of that potential. I really believe that. I think North Korea is a country with tremendous potential, and I think they're going to want to take advantage of it. So we'll see what happens. But Iran has tremendous potential, and I can't imagine they're going to want to go through what they're going to have to go through uh, if they want to do it the hard way. So we'll see what happens. You, you, Rouhani, and Macron will all be at the General Assembly in New York later this month. Could a meeting potentially happen? Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, I very much appreciate President Macron's involvement, but we're not dealing through President Macron. People are dealing with us directly. We don't have to go through another country. We have actually — we've had a lot of help, uh, if we want it, from Japan. Japan is one of their biggest — possibly their biggest buyer of oil. They have a big relationship. That's Prime Minister Abi. So we uh, we don't need anybody to deal. We can deal directly if we want. Sure. But other countries are offering help. Uh, they'd like to see it straightened out. But they also agree with me. We had a great G7, and they all agreed no nuclear weapons for Iran. They all agree no nuclear weapons for Iran. No, well, that's not their last statement, actually. Uh, but they did say it in a different forum. Uh, they said, uh, until we do certain other things, like drop sanctions, and that's not happening, okay? That won't be happening. They, uh, they didn't say quite the way you said it, but they said it uh, with the same end result, and that won't happen. Is, is it possible that there could be a meeting between you and Rouhani at the UNGS? Sure. Anything's possible. They would like to be able to solve their problem. they got a big problem. They're getting killed financially. Uh, their inflation is at a number that few people have ever seen inflation at. And it's a very sad situation. They could solve it very quickly. We could solve it in 24 hours. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I can only say this. When you hear they have their worst year in over half a century, this is the worst year they've had in — that anybody can even remember, but over 50 years, over half a century, I would think they want to solve the problem. People have no idea. You know, we've created tremendous wealth in this country, in our country, since I've been elected. Uh, well over $12 trillion. They've lost probably $20 trillion. When I assumed office, had my opponent won within two years, in my opinion, maybe less, China would have been a bigger economy than the United States, would have been bigger. 
Now we're so far ahead of them, it'll take them years to catch. And if we always have competent people sitting here, they'll never be able to catch us. We, we have a springboard. It's amazing what's happened. And let me tell you, if I wanted to do nothing with China, my stock market, our stock market, would be 10,000 points higher than it is right now. But somebody had to do this. To me, this is much more important than the economy. Somebody had to do this. We had to do it with China. It had to be done. And I'm not even talking about purely economically. I'm talking about in other ways also. And they were — it was out of control. And they were out of control. So we'll see what happens. If they want to make a deal, they'll make a deal. If they don't want to make a deal, that's fine. But I, I can tell you, they're having one of the worst — I guess the worst on record. And they want to make a deal. And if I were them, I'd want to make a deal, too. But we'll see what happens. Okay? Anything else? Well, Boris is a friend of mine, and he's uh, — he's — he's going at it. There's no question about it. He's in there. I watched him this morning. He's uh, — he's in there fighting. And uh, he knows how to win. Boris knows how to win. Don't worry about him. He's going to be okay. And he's also got — you know, they have a big stake in the Bahamas. When you mention that, they have a very big stake in the Bahamas. So I know they have one ship that's on its way, had a hard time getting there with the weather. but. It's on its way, and they have a lot of people over there. So uh, they have a big stake. Okay? What was the, uh, what was the uh, rationale for rolling back the regulations on energy-efficient light bulbs? On what? Energy-efficient light bulbs. I will give you a report on that. We're doing a report on all of that. But uh, there's a very good rationale when you hear it. And what's saved is not, uh, is not worth it. For the little they saved uh, and what people were going through, it is not worth it. And price was another thing. Okay? Same thing with cars. Uh, in California, they have a standard where the cars are going to have to be much more expensive and won't be as good. So we're giving an option to car companies to create a better car for less money, meaning less money to the consumer. So if the consumer can save $3,000 on a car and have a very energy-efficient car, but not energy-efficient so that the car doesn't work well, which is happening, we're giving them a tremendous option, if they want the option. We're giving it to the consumer, but we're giving it to the car company to pay — companies to pass along. And we'll see how that one works out. We're doing that. We're doing a lot of that. We want to make it good for the consumer. If we can build a less expensive car that's better, uh, we like that. Since we likely won't be able to ask you questions in this afternoon's event, what impact do you think this $2 billion in opioid grants will have? So we've done a great job with uh, — with drugs, generally. But it's a tremendous worldwide problem. But we've done a very good job with opioids and uh, getting fewer people to use them and prescribe them. And uh, we're about 17 percent down from uh, a little more than a year ago. That's a big number when you think 17 percent. Uh, but we're about 17 percent down. And one of the things we are doing is we're funding different projects where we come up with a painkiller that's not addictive. You know, you have people go into a hospital with a broken arm. They come out, they're drug addicts after three days. Uh, the opioid stuff is bad. And when they get used to it, once they get hooked, it's a very hard thing to get off of. So we're down 17 percent. We're going to be doing uh, a conference today, as you know, and we'll talk a little bit about it. But We've worked very, very hard on opioids and all of the problems that they're causing. Tremendous problems. Okay? Can you talk about your health care benefits? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. 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 Thank you, ever